So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jeff Doucette. I'm the minister here at Enniskillen Tyrone in Tyrone. And so uh, today I have gathered some friends. We are going to have a Holy Week Geek Fest. Uh, <laughs> we are folks who love Holy Week and uh, ministry with our people. And so I wanted an opportunity for us to have a chance to talk uh, a bit about Holy Week, past memories, uh, present, what we love about Holy Week, and what we hope that you, as members of our congregations, will uh, pick up from us and maybe question and go, well, oh, maybe I'll go for that. And so first off, though, let's introduce ourselves and Kathy. Go for it. Good morning. My name is Kathy Gridante, and I'm serving the Bridge North United Church in Bridge North, Ontario. Jennifer. Uh, hi, I'm Jennifer Uranu. I'm serving Blackstock Nestleton United Church in Blackstock. And Stephanie. Hi. Uh, my name is Stephanie Richmond, and I am serving Kedron United Church in Oshawa, Ontario. And Karen? Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Hammond Croxall, and I'm serving Trinity United Church in Uxbridge. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Brotherton, and I serve St. Paul's United Church in Bowmanville. Cordelia? Hi, I'm Cordelia Karpenko, and I'm serving at St. Paul's United Church in Ajax. And Kimberly. Um, hi, I'm Kimberly Allen McGill. I'm I'm uh, joining you from Ottawa. Um, I am a longtime United Church musician. Um, I have recently started a position with Grace Presbyterian Church here in Ottawa. Oh, cool. And I am also um, the office administrator for Navin Vars United Church, a small rural congregation. And I'm a former board member, executive member of Music United, and a board member of the Summer Institute of Church Music. So music is in my heart and soul, and all of um, the Holy Week and ministry uh, aspects. Oh, great. Thanks, everyone. So let's dive right into it. So first off, though, I want to kind of bring you back a little bit like Sophia uh, from the Golden Girls, like picture it <laughs> and uh, go back <laughs> into our collective memories. And just what are some of your earliest memories of Holy Week at whatever age? And I'll just open it up from here. I can go. I remember the first time um, I moved a great deal as a child with the military. So we would go to church sporadically because we only ever lived every two years. And I remember the first time we moved somewhere permanent and we actually went to a Good Friday service like we used to go to Easter. And I'd never been to a Good Friday service. Mm. And I remember the sense of awe but also this incredible sense of connection it was like a piece fell into place um so i remember i remember that yeah i actually remember my first holy week very clearly i didn't grow up in the church i we must have gone kind of sporadically when i was a child but we had stopped going by the time i was maybe eight or nine so I started going to church on my own at the age of 18, and I was 19 then that first Holy Week. And there was another woman who had also restart, recently started going to the church. And so I remember very clearly, you know, Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday. I had a friend who was singing in the choir of the High Anglican Church. So we went to an Easter, so I went to an Easter vigil to hear her sing with all of the kind of fire and the and then and I just remember the kind of the the awe and the kind of movement of the arc of that whole week. And just how 
how significant and how moving it was to kind of follow that story um, was quite the introduction. Mm -hmm. I can share. Um, I grew up in a Catholic tradition, um, not that we were huge church goers, but I do remember that a Good Friday was a day where we did not eat meat. Um, so it was also the day that we usually boiled the hard boiled eggs. And so eggs were uh, fish and eggs were our mainstay on Good Friday. And I do remember that that was a, a that, that there was something holy about that. Um, and I do remember that always getting dressed up to go to the Easter service and how sacred and special that was as a child. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of early memories. The first one is is one that actually makes me smile. Um, I grew up in the Anglican church and I remember having a minister who was a farmer and he farmed part-time and he did his sunrise service and then he did his 930 service and would go home and do chores in between. And when he showed up for the 930 service being this this 10, 11 year old who was just aghast that the United Church or the Anglican Church minister had shown up in his rubber boots <laughs> under his alb um, for the 930 service and just being blown away at how real he was. I think it was the first moment I got a glimpse of a minister being a real person. And, and the second memory is, is one that, that leaves me still filled with awe. We went to church from the time I was born, I think. And so for us, the routine of Holy Week was very much a part of our lives. And so we would do the Monday, Thursday service, the Good Friday service, the Easter, or the Easter vigil on Saturday, and then the sunrise service on, on sunrise Sunday, um, Easter Sunday. And I remember we would do it in the, in the fellowship room of our church. And there was a window uh, that was right behind the communion table that was set up. And I remember this one year vividly, the sun coming up and just watching it rise behind the minister and just how I felt. And I, I can't even put words to it. It was this visceral feeling of awe and mystery and new life and resurrection. I don't know that I've ever felt it as powerfully as I did that Sunday. And I don't particularly know why, other than it just felt like it really felt like Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen and all is good with life. Um, and that, I think, will stick with me for, for all of my life, for sure. Well, I wrote down a couple of things. Don't be worried. <laughs> um I started thinking like as a child and I grew up in the Anglican church as well. Uh, that might surprise you, Michelle. We have a lot of things in common. We do. <laughs> I remember all the colors of Easter and I was excited for Jesus and chocolate and ham and the smell of the Easter lilies. And I can remember my mom dressing me up in a, a fancy dress with a, a matching hat little white gloves and a purse, just like mom. And I remember the palm branches and I couldn't wait to get one in my hand. As an adult, um, I'd say I look forward to much the same things. Um, the Easter lilies are gone because we're not allowed to have them. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom and dad are gone. Um, but I, I hold those memories, those cherished times and and going to church um, and I felt the hope of Easter after a tough day at seminary uh, one of my classmates would always say don't worry Easter is coming mm -hmm. and it took me a while to really understand what that meant and I thought yeah why am I stressing over this exam Easter's coming um one quick other cherished memory, uh, when I was on internship in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, 
And Reverend Stephen Fram asked me to do the early morning Easter service. And it was well attended down by the harbor. And I came out in costume and I was nervous because I had memorized a script and I really wanted to do well. And I was able to just lose myself in the moment. And, and it was just so meaningful. And I will always cherish that time of um, community and, and learning together. I uh, became a church musician when I was 12. Um, my wow. father, um, I, I come from a little rural area east of Ottawa and from a dairy farming family. And there was a lovely octogenarian who was uh, playing the pump organ. And um, one Sunday she didn't show up and there was a meeting and my father went and told them he had paid for a lot of piano lessons. So <laughs> I was signed up for one Sunday a month under the supervision of my grandmother um, who uh, and the minister who mentored and trained me. Wow. Um, so one of the things I really enjoyed as a kid um, was the jubilant and special music we have for um, a Holy Week. Um, who doesn't love a parade? Um, <laughs> we don't sing a Hosanna, loud Hosanna, at, really at any other time of year. Um, being muzzled by not singing Hallelujah for the 40 days of Lent is um, pain and suffering for me. Okay. And um, um, and I also am taken aback and in, in awe of the beauty and the sadness of Good Friday music. Mm -hmm. um, so the arc that you're talking about really resonates with me. And, and our job as musicians is to take the liturgy and the readings and deliver them in another format so that mm -hmm. we actually internalize and feel that, that the, the good, the Holy Week story. So um, it's something I really, you know, take seriously and try to um uh bring forward as a kid and and you know it was i put a lot of energy and time into that and as an adult even more so the poor presbyterians who've just hired me don't know what's going to happen to them probably on 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 sunday so that's awesome Did everybody have a chance to share? Did we get everyone? Kathy, did we got yeah. you also? Okay. Yeah. Um, no. Oh, no, we didn't get you? Yeah. No, it's okay. Oh, we it's did. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I just, I'm thinking back for myself, and I always thought, like, I'm, Stephanie, I'm like you. I grew up Catholic, and um, I always used to say it was the absolute worst week to be Catholic because it seemed like you never left the church uh, because we went to everything. We went to Monty Thursday, and we also had a potluck supper just before we went upstairs to uh, to our uh, our Monty Thursday service and Good Friday, and I mean it was long. And uh, <laughs> Stephanie, we had fish sticks and corn was our Good Friday, and I still love fish sticks and corn with a passion. So. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, I mean, the Good Friday service is long when you're Catholic. And then, then back for the Easter vigil again. And I can still hear my priest, Leo, who was all of about five foot two, five foot three, but made up for it with a big booming voice during the beginning of the vigil when he would mark the candle and Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Um, and then we got up early and went down to Red Rapids, um, one of the churches where uh, also that Leo um, was the minister at. And we went for the sunrise for around six o'clock and then ham and eggs after that. And then back to the, our church for Easter Sunday. So 
by by the end of it as a kid like i was exhausted <laughs> um but i really think uh, i I'm, i just i'm so thankful that my parents went because i think there was so much of that week that stuck with me in various uh movements of uh, of holy week that really and also palm sunday i mean we were there for palm sunday so if you're catholic you get the long gospel on palm sunday and you get the long gospel again on good friday so that and everybody walking up to the cross and then everybody walking back up for communion so um but I, i'm really glad i did because i think it just became ingrained within me from my young days so yeah and I'm hoping that this kind of little bit will help folks back home begin to look at your own early memories of um, your Holy Week journey. Um, so I got everybody, right? Just want to make sure. Yeah, good. Okay, so let's move into the second um, question, which is, what is it that you love about Holy Week? Goodness gracious, and I'll try and keep us all on track. <laughs> I mean, I can start if that's, Go for it. and I, I think it's, it's, I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm a person who's very much about story. And in a Holy Week and in the services, we're reenacting that story of Jesus' final days and Jesus' final week. Um, and and we're kind of we're entering into it, I think, in a way that certainly in the United Church we we don't typically. Um, and so it's it's I mean it is it's exhausting. Speaking for myself, it's still exhausting. I nap for about three hours on Easter Sunday after after worship. But being able to engage and to kind of live that story, to reenact that story, um, and to be able to share that with fellow Christians and with fellow believers, and to lead people through that as a minister, that's, there's something about it that I feel like we don't do in the same way anywhere else in the church year, um, that as somebody who's engaged in story, I love Um, as an office administrator and a church musician working for two different churches, one of the things that I don't love about Holy Week is that there's a wall of work that keeps coming. <laughs> um, so um, it is a time for careful planning and to get organized and early. Um, but I, I get energy from seeing the reactions and the participation of, of people as they experience the music and the worship service and the liturgy. And it is a focal point for our faith, actually. And, and I, it's um, all of a sudden there's a bump up in the singers that want to come forward and participate. Yeah. And I love that. Mm -hmm. The more the merrier. And, and um, uh, it's really wonderful also. I invite people to put forward their favorites. Tell me what these services mean to you and what are is the music that speaks to you mm -hmm. for good friday and for for easter sunday and i can't imagine easter sunday without jesus christ is risen today mm -hmm. and um uh on good friday i always schedule the old record cross mm -hmm. And um, somewhere, instrumentally or whatever. And people, nine times out of 10, come forward to me and go, we got to sing that. Mm -hmm. It is part of their memory 
their anchoring of their faith, it seems. And that's a very old hymn. I mean, mm -hmm. there's lots more modern stuff out there. But it seems to center people and bring them together. So that that bonding in in is what I really love. How we come together and and experience Holy Week. Well, Kimberly, I have a I have a bit of a love hate with with that whole thing in in my experience of of Good Friday. Um, I because I've always sung in a church choir since I was about ten. I remember um, sitting in the pews and the junior choir was singing "Turn Your Radio On." Do you remember that one? Yeah. And um, I was like, I want to sing in the choir. And I have been singing in the choir ever since, youth choir. And then finally, when I um, moved up north, I got to be in the senior choir. That was the first time I'd ever been in the senior choir. Except what I found out with the senior choir is, on Good Friday, they're always the crowd. And I absolutely detested having to yell, crucify him. I said, that's so mean. Why does the choir always have to do that? And so I dreaded Good Friday for years while I sang in the choir. And I promised myself when I went into ministry that I was never going to make the choir be the crowd. Because it was such a terrible experience for me. I just hated it. Um, but anyway, it's 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 turned around, I think, in terms of um, my, uh, my love for the, for the, as Cordelia said, the story. I, I think that's just, um, and I would say that the thing that, um, that might be what I hated the most, but what I loved the most was um, in my settlement charge when I was in Newfoundland, the, um, I, I'm not a morning person, so I'd never attended a sunrise service in my entire life until the day I had to lead one. And um, the church sat on a hill looking out over the harbor, and then there was an opening that went out to the ocean, and um, we lit a fire, and the sun came up out of that ocean, right, like, just sort of like what Michelle was saying, and it just, you can't you know, I've never, never in all the years since experienced anything like that very first one. It was just awe-inspiring. So, yeah. So those are kind of my my love hate with Easter and Holy Week. I I can relate with you, Kathy, with the whole the whole Good Friday um and and the storytelling. I love the 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 richness of the stories and the fact that they 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 can touch all of our emotions over that time span mm -hmm. and i remember doing my first good friday service that i was leading and and i i know it's so important to touch those hearts but i remember thinking this is so sad and <laughs> i i'm making the congregation sadder but you can't get much sadder <laughs> but and but it's also so important to be able to to feel those emotions and 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 go there and so like there is that that whole um wanting to be that that comfort and peace for our people but yet that that that, that there's something in having those feelings and, and getting in touch with those feelings and letting them be real. So yes. And, and I, my very first um, sunrise service at green bank, we would walk from the church to the cemetery, which was on a hill and the same thing, the sun would be rising as we arrived. And as the sun rose, when you looked to the East, there were windmills that looked like the three crosses of Golgotha. Oh, so wow. it was, it's just, it is magical. It is, it is so spiritual. And I think the whole, the, the, the name of the week, Holy Week, you know, it has so much holy and wholeness of it all and holy in the sacredness of it all. So that's kind of what I love about it. Just being able to, to immerse in those stories and the richness of it. Stephanie, you talk about the emotions, and that's that's what I was thinking. I'm not sure love is a good word uh, for me in terms of what I appreciate, because uh, for me, it is about touching every human emotion that we have from the the joy and the triumphant nature of Palm Sunday to the pain and heartache of Good Friday. Um, if we're courageous enough to go there on Good Friday, 
um, it makes Easter Sunday morning that much more powerful. And I remember one particular year, um, it was before I was in ministry, and I'm I'm somewhat grateful because I'm not sure how I would deal with it if it happened to me in ministry on Good Friday as someone leading. But I remember being at a Good Friday service and just feeling so broken myself and having no way of being able to put to words how, how I was feeling and what I was experiencing and, and just feeling like no one understood where I was and what I was experiencing. And that Good Friday, the brokenness of the cross and the pain of the cross, I remember leaving that Good Friday service thinking somebody understands. Mm. Somebody understands, and I'm not alone in this pain. And I think it's the one time in the church year where particularly I think as United Church, we give ourselves permission to go to those hard, painful, gut-wrenching places. And if we're courageous enough to go there with our people, then I think there's there's a real pastoral aspect to it in the sense that it allows us to maybe express things that are there that need expressing that words can't do. And and so for me, um, just that that whole emotional roller coaster is life. And in one week, uh, we journey through through life and the highs and lows of life. And to be able to do that in community, because we don't know the stories necessarily of everyone that is coming that week to our church services. And just the opportunity to be able to touch people's hearts and lives in a way that maybe helps someone realize they're not alone um, is, is really important. And then, of course, it just makes, you know, the new life that comes with Easter Sunday that much more richer and more powerful. And and I realized that one particular Good Friday, that though it didn't feel like there would be an Easter Sunday, there would be. And I just needed to endure through that. Um, so I would say there's something sacred. I appreciate the sacredness of it. I'm not sure. Love just feels like an odd emotion around it. But but just that that awe and that and that sacredness uh, is really is really important to me for that week. As you're speaking, Michelle, my my ears are my my uh, eyes are getting watery. My glasses are fogging up, and uh, I was thinking of um, it. Just came to me the services where we had actually made the sound of hammering the nails and the power of that um yeah and i i remember times where on a monday thursday or um or a holy saturday vigil that um we had we invited people to come into the church and everybody had uh their own time just alone in the sanctuary or in a smaller chapel to read some scripture by candlelight, um, to be alone with your thoughts and the specialness of that, of just being in the church alone. And some of those times were at night as well. And, um, but I did like knowing that there's a happy ending and, um i i love decorating for easter like sandy and um but it's true that um in one week we're going through the gambit of emotions and everything that happens in holy week stirs up things within ourselves as well um so you know good thing easter morning comes Mm -hmm. yeah um it's messy holy week mm -hmm. right getting organized mm -hmm. isn't it mm -hmm. um i mean mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of transition there that takes place and um i 
sometimes um, I'm going, how is this ever going to come together? And it always does. Mm -hmm. I started creating at my church. I basically took a couple of those six foot long tables and made signs for every service and then put everything that was needed for every service. Mm -hmm. I'm not naturally organized, so I give the Holy Spirit credit for that. <laughs> um, because it is, there's a lot going on. Um, but while you were all talking, there's another moment on Maundy Thursday that really, and I don't know why, and again, it sounds weird to say love, or it's, but I don't know why it's so powerful, but so the way we do the service is you read the kind of section of the gospel and then you reenact. So we read about the foot washing, we do. And at the end, at the very end of it, we read about Judas's betrayal and then we strip the sanctuary and then people leave in silence. Mm -hmm. And it seems, I, you know, I don't know why it's so powerful for me. I, I don't know what it is about, but maybe it is. Again, in the United Church, we don't talk a lot about, we talk a lot about collective sin. But that moment to just reflect on our own, mistakes the times that we haven't I, I don't I don't really have the words but there's something about that moment mm -hmm. but doing it in light of the fact kind of sitting with that moment but also you know where the story's going mm -hmm. if that I don't know if that makes any sense but It does, Cordelia, because I think about um, some some Monday Thursday nights when when I've left the sanctuary and come on Good Friday, being overwhelmed by those ways that I have nailed Jesus to the cross, by by things I have done or not done, and and not in a you know I'm going to lash myself with a whip. 40 times to, you know, because, oh, sinful me, but just that opportunity to face those harder parts of me and, and my journey and my faith. And yeah, there's something, there's something there that, yeah, is hard to articulate with words. And I suppose that's the thing about Holy Week, isn't it? Is that there's so much going on that we don't have have the words for it's hard to articulate what's happening i think that's and i think that's why music is so important yeah. and i yes i think i think during these services when we are more interactive with our congregants yeah. that we maybe experience that connection on a deeper level with them as well it's when there's the foot washing, when there is the communion, when there, you know, it, the pounding, the nails or people bringing a candle forward to the cross, or there is those, those interactions and those rituals really can really mean a lot and be very, very touching and emotional to us as well. Mm -hmm. I always say that, uh, I, I haven't, uh, been a priest since 2007 but every year around this time this is the only time that i miss being a priest <laughs> um it's because i'm not going to have the opportunity to do the easter vigil um mm -hmm. as well as all of the other movements you know we did everything but there was something about that easter vigil um and i would always tell folks look folks everybody knows this is going to be about three hours long tonight so don't bother wearing the watch. Don't bother looking at it because it's not going to make us go any faster. Just we're in a, what I loved is they would say, we're, we're in a sense of timelessness during Holy Week. So there is no sense of time. We're lost in time. We're lost in the story. And so that Easter vigil, like, I mean, we, we danced outside around a bonfire 
um, for the new fire uh, mm -hmm. that we would bless and then light the, the Paschal candle and go into this darkened church and it would be uh, lit simply by the candles of everyone that had gathered there. And then we listened to every single scripture passage which was like about 10 passages we didn't skimp on them and then we did when we did baptisms we had a total immersion font in um riverview and so i got to go in and um, do baptisms by immersion right in the water with my people and um there's just nothing like it it, it just so for me oh i miss that so i always send my annual a greeting back to the folks in my uh, old grouping of Riverview when it's time for the vigil. I'm like, I said, I'm right there with you in that font tonight. Um, <laughs> and they're all like, oh my gosh, and we have such incredible memories <laughs> of you being with us. Um, but I, 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 one of the things that I always remember is a friend of mine once said, well, why would I bother going and listen to all that again? I listened to it last year. I've already heard the story. And I would just respond simply, and he knew it was coming because he did it every year just to torment me. We were good friends. And I'd say, but you know, your story's changed, right? You're not the same person last year hearing that story. Mm -hmm. uh, you've changed. And so that Easter story, that Holy Week story is going to speak not only to you, but to our community in a different way, because, you know, we have folks that are no longer with us. We have folks you know, that are going through all kinds of different things. And um, I love that we've all been talking about, it's about the story, right? It, it's the story that we only tell this time of year, but it's also the story of our people that are so intimately entwined with this story. And that's what I love about this week, because I said, this is the only time of the week, a uh, year that, um, at least in my congregation, I speak only for myself, that we wash feet, you know, mm -hmm. that we stand before the cross, that we talk about the empty tomb, um, that we have a parade on uh, Palm Sunday. Um, this is when the church brings out these moments and also says there's no possible way to tell the story all at once. We, it would overwhelm us. So we tell it in sections and then mm -hmm. we go home mm -hmm. and we think about it and then we come back the next day <laughs> um and we yeah. can keep going with that story um because the story never finishes and i never i never dismiss people like um because it's it's an open ended story that begins palm sunday for us and continues on through until that final you know go in peace mm -hmm. on easter sunday um and I just, I think back to those moments. Um, I remember when I was a young priest and I was in Edmonston, New Brunswick, and um, I was the assistant in one of the churches. And so the the head priest divvied up who was doing what. And I ended up getting Good Friday. And I'm like, oh, oh. I don't, want, I don't want Good Friday. I want Monday, Thursday. I want to do foot washing. I want to, but... <laughs> I also began, when I went through that, um, I was blown away by it. I was in tears um, because I had entered into relationship with people. And as people came up during the Catholic Good Friday service and what they call the veneration of the cross, where they would just come in front of the cross, either stand in silence or they would touch the cross or they would kiss the cross or embrace the cross. I just would see people and their stories um, and just would be overwhelmed um, <laughs> to the point when I was in Riverview, uh, my friend Claudette, um, who was the music director, uh, would say, I have to turn my music podium off to the side so I'm not looking at you, Jeff, because otherwise I'm going to be in tears because I look down and I see you in tears, whether you're foot washing, whether you're watching people go to the cross, um, you know, whether you're at uh, the font. Um, it's, yeah, it, 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 you know, we talk about, is it love for this? I just, I moved by this, um, mm -hmm. deeply, yeah. like just yeah. to the very bottom of my toes and my being, um, to the point I used to give workshops on 
um, Holy Week without a note, because <laughs> I would say I, I could talk all day on this. Um, mm -hmm. There's just so much about this that I love, and it affects me also. And I would always finish off, I remember writing a reflection of the movements of that week, of how that touched me. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's an incredible, incredible week. Um, and I miss not, <laughs> I miss not being able to call my dad. Because my dad loved this. My dad was a musician, Kimberly. And so he did all of the music for Holy Week. So I would love calling and talking to dad and telling him about the Holy Week service that I had just finished at our church. Um, and we would have these great deep conversations about it. And uh, yeah, musicians know because you practice this week after week after week after week. It's in there, uh, whether it's the music for those pieces or it's the cantatas. Um, I'm going to be singing Do This and Remember Me by Pepper Choplin as part of our Maundy Thursday uh, communion and foot washing. Um, I just barely make it through that. And I've done that a number of times. It's powerful it how is. music comes into this. And it's not just an addition. It's an integral part. Because when we can't find the words, mm -hmm. we can sing them. <laughs> you know? Um, Think yeah. about the as a chance. Jesus, remember me. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Yeah. That is like the, you know, I think Michelle, it was it Michelle or Kathy said it. Uh, this is life, right? As we go yeah. through this. And that music helps get us there. Yeah. when we can't verbalize it you yeah. know there is it's um particularly on good friday you know or monday thursday mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, and and it's something i find i have to teach and remind people of I want you to think about the scripture when you're singing this. Yes. You are helping people feel this. Yes. And it's important that we do feel it. And and I I um your comment from your friend going, why do we have to do this this year? I think we need it every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We really do need this in our society and our faith. And that's what we do as churches. Mm -hmm. We help people in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And winter is sucks sometimes, you know, and <laughs> COVID sucks. And yeah. how do we combat that stuff? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny. One day. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I, I never, I never, as much as I'd love to have our churches filled, I never, I always tell folks, um, I'm always going to be there to tell the story because that story has got to be told every year. Yeah. You know, yeah. If we don't tell yeah. the story, we're going to let go of it and it's no longer going to be significant and it's significant. Absolutely. For me, what? it's, it, oh, so, yeah, for me, it's the fulcrum, uh, Holy Week is the thing that keeps me going, and I hope that it's the thing that for the congregation, like without that, yeah. and I remember one year on my internship, I was in Winnipeg, and the the Jewish community was amazing in Winnipeg, and very, and so they, they invited us to a full Seder on Monday, Thursday, like they did it yeah. for us, like with their rabbi, and, and it was, it was three hours, and it was amazing. And it was, it was so, there was this incredible sense of community, but the connection and all the words and all the rituals. And then, you know, and then it was, uh, then we did the Good Friday service and with a lot of silence in the midst of that, for that pain, you know, and it doesn't always have to be nice. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. awful, it's hard, everything you've been saying. And, and that silence speaks 
you know, so we went from this incredible, there was a lot of wine and it was 18% because it had to be, you know, you know, and, um, and it was a okay. joyous celebration of, of the presence of God within the Jewish context, right? It would have been Jesus and, and just this incredible horrid journey, but, but never being alone. And then we go to Good Friday when there's, how do we carry that into that in this silence when did Jesus feel alone? Do we feel alone? Like in that and allowing that silence, as you've said, and pain and agony to just be and acknowledge it. And then, but there was vigils, right? So it was, you know, so then all day Saturday, there was people for all the way until Sunday morning, you know, everybody took an hour and they came and, and then there's that Sunday morning right? and you start off with, yes, you know, Christ is risen and it's just like, wow. And, and if I didn't have that, like sometimes places I've been don't have all of it. So, oh no, we can't do that. And that's okay. It's, that's not their thing. But I, I hold that particular time, which had been 1987, in my brain, um, remembering, because it, it anchored that story that you started us all off with, Cordelia. Like it anchored it in a really, that I mean, I remember it. And I just... For me, and I hope for that, there, there needs to be a time when we just stop. You know, we experience and then we stop. And sometimes I feel on a, a regular Sunday morning, okay, we got to do this and this and this and this. We got to songs, but not, and not to diminish our worship in any way, but it's like talk, 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 sing, 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 sing. And then we have, we have, and it's great and it gives us, but without this time to say, Life is hard. Life is difficult. There's horrors in the world. And look at this horror we're talking about and, and how fortunate we are to have, because we know what's coming on Sunday morning, but it feels so real. And it seems like it's a reflection of reality. And I, I feel like if we, if we let all of that go, like you just said, if we let this, this time go, then everything else, the rest of the year just doesn't feel, it feels more superficial. I'm hoping my sermons aren't superficial, like they're not meant to be. But you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like Holy yeah. Week is my anchor. It's my fulcrum. It's what, it, what gets me through. It is what the year is all about, really. The rest yeah. of it is a reflection of, of because it yeah. encompasses so yeah. much of our life journeys and our faith as, yeah. as as people who lead worship as you know whether we're doing the music and 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 everything and the word and the actions and without it it just yeah that, so that's that's why you, you said you love I, I, I love holy week and you know i said the same thing i love it not because yeah great it's going to be so much fun it is yeah. but not because it's fun but it's so meaningful mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, it just, it's that. It just holds me. Yeah. yeah. So the I day that, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, and it's funny because for me, in some ways, the day that sticks out is actually Saturday when we have nothing mm -hmm. because you're waiting. Mm -hmm. um, and it is that feeling. I had a, an old seminary classmate die recently and it is that feeling in the wake of a death of just that emptiness and that waiting and that just now what? And Saturday, mm -hmm. when, you know, we don't have any services, you know, quite possibly you're still writing your sermon for Easter Sunday, but, you know. Um, but when really the rest of the world and the rest of life is just going on and you're sitting in that place in the middle of the story where death has happened, but the resurrection hasn't. And it... it It puts me in mind, I did a public trustee funeral when I was back in Saskatchewan and I didn't know where I was going. So I was there very early when the grave had been dug, but it hadn't been dressed yet. And so all it was, was a body shaped six foot hole in the ground when you can see the shovel marks down the side. And it's like, that's what Saturday feels like. 
And we don't, I think, as a society do that. We don't stay there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I remember a family mm -hmm. in Northern Ontario because the, the funeral, the, the cemetery was, of course, in the bush because, you know, that's where I served. And they, um, uh, there were six children and they went to the cemetery after and they dug the grave for their mother and they put her in the grave and they put the dirt on them, you know and they did and that was very important for them and it was like and it was in that place what you've just described brought it I can see it as you were talking yeah. Cordelia it was that place of acknowledging the death and being with that grief you know yes there'll be tomorrow for them but right now and it was very important it wasn't just like a tradition they needed to do that for themselves and for their mom and you know and to do that and to be there and it was hard work because uh, it's the canadian shield you know and it it's yeah uh it was something i i, I remember them very well i can see them yeah, and it brought that back to mind when you said that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Instead yes, of just walking out of the funeral home. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. No, I'm done. Okay. No, I was just gonna say I had a, a quite a profound conversation in the car with my daughter yesterday, and she was telling me how, you know, they're getting emails at work um honoring um different faith traditions. And she suggested to the person sending the email, could they acknowledge Lent? And I thought, wow, <laughs> you know, and the person's response was, well, well, we were going to say something about Easter, but um, she said, but what about Lent? And it really got this person thinking and, you know, we, we, uh, if we're going to be in this place, we have to start here before we can get to Easter. And, uh, yeah. and she was just saying too that, um, you know, the commercialization of Easter was frustrating to her that, you know, for most people, it's about, you know, the Easter bunny coming and, you know, um it doesn't get much beyond that and uh so i was grateful that my daughter and and being 29 was thinking about such things yeah yeah it's important i think because we we live in a culture that's death denying and not wanting to be in that place right and we like to and and we're no different in our congregations we want to skip to the happy ending right we don't want to journey through that week and and that's why i think the rituals are so important because it allows us to like cordelia said enter into the story in really uh, tangible ways foot washing and the last supper and the anointing. And I mean, those stories are just so powerful and rich and you understand better the reason for Jesus death and, and what that leads us to ultimately in his resurrection. And so it's like the, the best part of a novel, right? If you're in it and you are turning the pages one after another, and you don't want to miss that part because it, if you skip to the end, then you've, you've lost all of the richness yeah. that, that it holds, right? And all of the, so for my congregations, it's really important for me that they, they touch and they taste and they see and they sing and they know, it viscerally know what that um, feels like to engage your whole being in it, right? And then then you can have like and i'm all about the joy i like <laughs> in ministry it's all about the joy but you got to get there and be immersed there and find the space give space for that um and then you know there's confetti cannons and balloons and all the things for happy easter 
themselves. Well, that's that's a good transition, Kathy, just for the last yeah. part uh, about what do you want your people to know uh, about Holy Week uh, mm -hmm. as we prepare to gather. So let's continue with that to close off our, our time well, together. I think a lot of us have really touched on the fact that we want, that, at least for me, and I'm not, I shouldn't speak for anybody else, but what I've been hearing is we all want our congregations to feel it. We want them to be immersed in the story and to to have that 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 visceral to take your words, Kathy, the, that mm -hmm. that immersion and and yeah. I'm hoping that in that there'll be a transformation of heart, there'll be an opening, there'll be a a deeper understanding or a growth yeah. somewhere in in their faith or in in some aspect um, that that it just it is meaningful and it, and it's well, it's always worthwhile, but my hope is that they, yeah. they, they show up, they come, and they are amazed by what they can yeah. learn and grow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, it, and I feel like I've preached this sermon probably more than once, but you can't have resurrection without crucifixion first. Mm -hmm. So, you know, come whether you join us online, whether you come in person, but come and engage with the whole story. Because if you're just going from triumph on Palm Sunday to triumph on Easter, you're missing mm -hmm. the whole point. You're, you're missing yeah. why we do all of that. You know, we, we, words aren't my strong point right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, just you're you're missing that. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't have Easter if you don't have the rest of Holy Week first. Yeah, and and I'd like to say that I think most people have a lot of Good Fridays and that stretch and Saturdays in their lives, like you described. Yeah. That I mean, and it truly, you know, and it would be so helpful to try to say, but this is this is why we have faith. It's not just because it's nice or it's happy or, you know, we feel, oh, yes, it's, but it's, I, I think to, to get through all the, the horrible things that truly do happen in our lives and in the lives of people we love or our world or, you know, the people next door or something that's, that can just be horrific and to actually be able to not manage it or handle it, but be in it and live in it in order to get to whatever we may be afterwards, because no matter what society may tell us, we all do that. We all have it. And if we have a place as people who have faith, if this is a faith place to say, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not perfect. Life is not perfect. You know, that may be what the, what everybody says, but it's not. And how do I get through this? Well, if we have this Holy Week experience sort of as a you know that 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 rock, but also um, as a like a, a, a what's, I'm trying to think of it as it's like okay, this is just like Holy Week. I can do this. I got through Holy Week. Okay, this is the hard time, but I'm you know not. I know it's going to be great, but also I know that there's community. I know that I can hang on. I know that I can reach out, and that we can walk that together. You know, that there's music that will hold me. And I remember the Good Friday music as well as the Easter Sunday music, right? And because that's our lives. Yeah, instead of pretending that it's all, hey, good morning, would you like a muffin with your coffee? Yeah, thank you so much, you know, and, and come and sit down. Would you like this pew? And it, we're, we're very friendly, which is wonderful. But I want somebody to be able to come in and say, you know what? I'm really, this is, this is rough right now for me. You know, well, here you go. We're with you. Let's do rough right now because I don't know. I hear yeah. you. I, what I hear is we can offer this safe space to be real. Yes. Yeah. And I would say amen to that because I think if there's anything I would want my folks to know um, is, is that it's a safe place to be who we are, mm -hmm. to allow our vulnerabilities to, uh, to be present because the world is hard. Life is hard. Yep. And uh, to be able to be in community in the midst of that and, and to feel, uh, to allow ourselves to go to those hard places. 
knowing that we aren't alone, knowing that that it isn't just the community that's around us, but God. God sustains us through this and that it's not a lack of faith when you say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. um, that, that that's a real emotion. That's a real uh, desire and longing and, and cry of anguish that, that our world is crying right now. Mm -hmm. And so I would, I would want my folks to be courageous yeah. and to allow themselves to feel the highs and the lows because I think it gives us a place to express maybe what we can't express in, in the world out there. Yeah. Every day of my life, people tell me, oh, I can't sing. I'm not a very good musician or I, I couldn't do that. Or, um, you know, from the time we are infants, we, you, our mothers uh, singing lullabies to us or the little toys with music is integral in our lives. Mm -hmm. And in the Easter story, there's very, and Holy Week, there are special songs that will touch your heart if you experience them together with the words and the, and the, 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 the creative space that our churches provide and our safe space, mm -hmm. that music is intuitive and it will touch you and it will help bring you into a new place and a new reality. It's a soundtrack for our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, we need that. We need motivational music. We need spirit is music to touch our souls. We need music to help us when we're sad and experiencing the anguish. And it is it's it's something that musicians don't do alone. We do it with God's help and God's gifts to us and with the creative talent of our clergy colleagues and others who bring us together to go through this experience. And it is life. Mm -hmm. Holy Week is life. Mm -hmm. I tell our folks or invite them to um, just be aware of this story, that this story is done in many movements so that we have an opportunity to breathe out and just sit with each of those movements that uh, when we gather, um, and I always tell them, think of Holy Week like a mini series. Um, mm. We would never think of only watching uh, two episodes or one episode. You know, we would never fully get the entire story. And even though we may have heard it, uh, there will be different things about it that will touch us. Um, and I just say, I, I mean, I simply invite you. You know the schedule. Try as much as you can to put aside time to come and be with the community. Um, and it's also online. You know, it will be there if for some reason you aren't able, like, but make sure you tune into the story <laughs> and catch those moments. But, uh, and and to know that it's a story that we walk uh, together with other people. Um, yeah. Nowhere in the story is there anything solitary. Uh, it's always with people and uh, that help us from one movement to the other uh, during the Holy Week story. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then we can just breathe out afterwards and then kind of go, okay, now what do we do with this story over the next 50 days? Because <laughs> it never finishes there. Um, yeah. I would yeah. hope. Um, yeah, Sorry. last thoughts, because I, I just, I want to respect your time and, uh, you know, we could go on for quite a while with this. <laughs> I'll just say it quickly. I, I just want them to know that we're all loved with an unconditional love. We're all forgiven. Um, this is, a, this Holy Week is real. And um, Jesus is just as revolutionary and relevant in 2024 and pass it over to Kathy. Oh, no, I'm good. Yeah, okay. that's wonderful. Can yeah. I add one more one more thought then? Sure, sure. Which is, which is just that 
I would love for folks to just know that it's okay to be emotionally where you are. So if we hit Easter Sunday and in your heart and your life, you're still in Good Friday or Saturday, it's okay. Come and take it as a promise of what will eventually be. That, you know, if if your heart's not singing hallelujahs on Easter, that's okay. You know, come and be where you are. Wow. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much uh, for being here and sharing your love and passion and memories and ideas. Um, blessings on all of your Holy Week celebrations and to all of our people who will be watching this, may it inspire you to take another look in a different way this year um, at the Holy Week story. So thank you all. Thank you, Jeff. So much. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you everybody. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Jeff. Thank you, everyone. Good to see everybody. Yeah. yeah.